today I'm going undercover on the Mighty. These don't fit. This bit lasted like five seconds. Hey Mighties, my name is Ashley. I was recently diagnosed with bipolar disorder, so today I am going to jump onto the Mighty, look up some questions people have asked about bipolar disorder, and give them an answer. So let's jump into the app. Okay, so I am going to look up the bipolar hashtag, see what pops up there. First question, what helps you during a manic episode? So I was actually diagnosed with bipolar 2, also called bipolar depression. Basically, that means that I don't experience full-blown mania. That's usually more typical in like bipolar 1. I do experience hypomania, which is a much lesser form of mania itself. Hypomania looks like a good day for me. Instead of super impulsive or reckless, it's me answering emails I've been really anxious about sending or getting a lot of stuff done. But what I do know about those hypomanic days, even though I'm not going to you know, extreme highs, I do still crash from them. Whether that crash is to a kind of level playing field or that crash ends up becoming like a very depressive episode, those emotions are gonna crash and I'm gonna feel down from it. So the best thing I can usually do is stop whatever I'm doing, whatever it is, because man, it's probably too much, and just slow down, honestly, because the crash is gonna be worse the more energy I expend, especially knowing that on those days that I am feeling more depressed, I'm already lower energy. I've noticed that now I've become aware of these episodes when they're occurring, so I'm able to stop myself when in the past it was just crash and burn every time. What is in your bipolar disorder toolkit? Lots of things, honestly, because how I'm feeling in each of those moments is drastically varied. I could just be like a little bit off and really a funny YouTube video for five minutes can change a lot, but there are some days where I like need to throw myself into projects in order to like even just be okay and stay where I'm at and not get any worse. I'm very artistic. I have like four different crafts or art projects that I usually split into different areas of my interests, like costuming, photography, and editing, those kinds of things. I have so many animals in this house. I personally have a dog and a cat who are just the most fantastic at helping when things are down because how can you not enjoy the moments of snuggling? one of your best friends. I would also say the biggest thing in my toolkit would be my partner because he knows, especially since I've gotten the diagnosis and I am a little bit more cognizant of my mood changes, he knows what I need because we communicate it ahead of time. So he's honestly been the most helpful piece of my toolkit because I can't think clearly in those moments, but he can and he can get me the help that I'm looking for. I like this one. What do you wish someone had told you about managing a bipolar diagnosis? With treatment, symptoms aren't just gone. They're really more than anything just bearable. It's the difference between something feeling urgent and something feeling annoying. When something's urgent, it feels like every fiber in your being is rushing on it and in panic mode to make it happen. Whereas when you're annoyed or it's like a nuisance, it's ever present, it's there but it's bearable. You can kind of brush it off. I also wish they told you that you like fought with yourself a lot. The way I put it is there's like a little inner Ashley that when I'm in a depressive episode or things are just um, going well for me, I can hear the little voice, the little logical voice in my head going like, everything's fine. Like here, you're, you're good. Like everything's okay. But the outside me is in full panic mode and having a breakdown for what feels like, you know, to little logical Ashley voice, no real good reason, but I'm having a huge me emotional reaction to it. And that sucks, but that is what it is. That's what's gonna happen. And I'm gonna fight with my inner voice that's telling me this is kind of ridiculous because I mean, it kind of is in a way, but it's what my brain's doing and I kind of have to roll, in, roll with it instead of roll against it. So what is a bright side of living with bipolar disorder? I think the the most like bright thing about this whole experience was just getting the diagnosis. It was definitely very overwhelming at first. I will not I will not deny that the like whole process was awful because you're already in an awful state of mind and you're trying to like logically explain to your doctor about your state of mind that isn't logical and it's just like a whole thing. But getting the diagnosis helped me to be a little bit more understanding of myself and accepting when I was just getting treated for classical depression. 
p.m. It wasn't working, right? And I was just beating myself up over the fact that I'm doing everything right but not seeing results. And so now I'm able to go, okay, well, this is why these things weren't working for you and be able to accept and kind of parse like where I do need to work on things and where my brain does take control and what I can do in those moments. So the best part about it is honestly just being able to put a name to the things I'm feeling and be able to kind of like have that self-awareness to move forward. Something that I wanna share is just like normal everyday people live with bipolar disorder. I mean, I have blue hair. Let's, let's step back as to what the definition of normal is. Your brain is just lying to you. You're still, you're going to be yourself at every point in this journey. It's just nice to be able to, like I said before, reduce that urgency if you need to. Living with bipolar disorder is definitely a challenge and I don't want to minimize that fact at all, but there are ways to make it more bearable. There are ways to make it, you know, make yourself feel like you have more control or have successful treatment. It's not an inherently bad thing to be bipolar and you aren't going to change because you're treating it. More people probably live with it than you think. It's pretty common mental illness to live with. And, you know, being able to accept and understand yourself makes a whole world of difference in living with it, in my opinion. Thanks for watching. Stay mighty.